name of Jobby, and today we're taking a look at the board forms Gladius the Dark Emperor. Uh, and this guy. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this has to be the worst experience I've had playing with a toy. But, as a professional toy reviewer, I have to do my due diligence and be as objective as possible. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Seriously speaking though, the idea of a triple changing Megatron sounds like the best thing ever. And for what I can tell, this figure was designed and produced by one guy and his bottle of Guinness. That... explains a lot. I'll try my best not to bash on the actual guy who created this figure. Because I don't doubt- because I don't doubt that he's an incredibly hardworking and passionate individual. However, passion and good work ethic could only get you so far. The actual fruits of your labor have to be ripe and firm. But this fruit seems to have been left out to rot. Jesus, I live with pigs. <coughs> with all that being said, the sculpting on this figure is not that bad. There's nothing much that can be said that's been said already. It's G1 Megatron through and through. Just with added treads to signify that he transforms into a tank and god. I don't look forward to that at all. That kibble is ugly as all hell, but the best Megatron toy ever has the same issue, so I can let it slide. The mechanical detail is also pretty good, but the chest is a little too broad for my taste. But that's only because I like MP36 so goddamn much. As its own thing, this doesn't look bad at all. Now you notice how I didn't comment on the painting a few seconds back? The sculpting on this figure is not that bad. Well, that's because there's barely any painting here. In fact, nothing is painted here, except the face. Which looks good, I guess? Now about the lack of paint. Okay. Yes, the lack of paint does make the figure look cheap, but I actually prefer when a Transformer figure doesn't have too many painted parts. On a lot of figures, the lack of paint encourages you to actually play with the toy since you don't have to worry about paint chipping. I can't even say that about my baby. This guy gets a new paint chip every time I breathe on him wrong. So the lack of paint should encourage us to play with this figure, but, and this has got to be the biggest but that's ever come out of my mouth, this figure is not solid at all. It's bad. Give up. The chest keeps falling apart. Skirts are loose. Shoulder pads are floppy. That kibble doesn't want to snap in. The cannon is floppy. The waist can go to hell. The skirts can go to hell. Pelvis can go to hell. The feet can go to hell. This figure can go to hell. But at least he's got ratchet joints. Believe it or not, it's actually a selling point of the figure that it has strong joints. And admittedly, yes, the joints are pretty tight. But just look at the disaster before you. Do you really think I give a shit about strong joints at this point? I can't even call this thing a proper figure. It's more like a plastic explosion. I need a goddamn bottle again. And to top off this catastrophic crescendo of fuck, the figure's tiny feet could barely support his weight. So just like any... Good Megatron figure, you get a ton of accessories. If you could manage to remove his face, you could replace it with a laughing face. You even get two of them. Oh, now it's good. But this shit-eating grin does not have anything on this shit-eating grin. I hate it. Not because it's bad, because it's not. It just makes the figure look like it's proud to be what it is. As if it's completely oblivious to the fact that it's complete and utter trash! You also get a sword, plugs into here, and that doesn't look too bad actually. Oh, shit. An unpainted matrix of leadership for fuck's sake. And the accessories just become a mass of cheap black plastic. I'm used to Megatron coming with a few extra parts. It's usually a stock and a silencer, and those combine to form a battle stand, yippee. But this, not only do you get a stock and a silencer, but there's parts within parts, and at some point I just can't be fucked to keep track of all of it. Here's the battle stand though, yippee. Now this is just a pre-release copy, the final release of the figure is supposed to come with even more accessories, like a mace and effect parts. But you probably don't care at this point because you won't be buying it. But throughout all of this, I actually managed to get the hang of it. At least enough to pose it without losing my goddamn mind. Ball joint at the head, can look up and down. Rotation at the shoulder, this part can move up and down. Forward and backward movement, the shoulder pad could... Arm moves out, bicep swivel, bend at the elbow, elbow swivel, wrist swivel, and the fingers are on individual hinge joints. Obvious joke. joke. Waist swivel is on a ratchet joint, but it doesn't matter at all. Front skirt moves up, allows for a high kick. You can move back that far. Side skirts move out, and don't snap in. But to give the devil his due, this thing does have a Beautiful spread, sometimes unintentionally. High swivel, bend at the knee. Actually, this is the actual bend at the knee. Out of all the joints here, this is actually too tight. Hinge joint here, hinge joint here, and a ball joint that allows for a seemingly decent pivot. But the pivot doesn't really do much to- Surprisingly, this figure actually has a good amount of articulation. It's a shame that no one's gonna want to pose this figure. Ah! 
Let's do some size comparisons. Here's Figma Modic Academy, SH Montserrat's Godzilla, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and the MP36 Masterpiece Megatron. When I see these figures together, I can't help but ask myself, why does this even exist? I'm all up for more Megatron toys, official or third party. But if you're not even gonna try to top this figure, or at the very least learn from it, what the fuck? And now we come to the part that I really don't want to do good. God, this transformation. I understand if you want to skip the mess that awaits you. But just keep in mind, I actually went through the trouble of transforming this thing on camera. Really? Because I love what I do and I needed to get this video over 10 minutes. And here we have the gun mode. And you know what? It's pretty good. Now that we don't have to be concerned about articulation, the figure actually works very well as a static object. No loose floppy bits, everything fits together really nicely. It's solid. The actual look of the gun is pretty neat too. It's not the classic Walter P38. It looks a little more modern than that. I guess it's a P99. But a big negative about this mode is that you can't really remove the stock and the silencer. Well, I mean, you can remove the silencer, but that just doesn't look right. The stock, however, is attached to the figure permanently, unless there's some way to remove it that I don't care about. And let's be honest here, this is a lame excuse for a stock. But you do have the option to dig into this pile of cheap black plastic to assemble a more traditional looking stock. It's uh... It's not worth it. And while it doesn't bother me personally, the trigger on this thing is not even spring-loaded. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's the worst thing about this figure. So the permanent attachments on the gun make this thing stupid long. In other words, size comparisons. Madagagazilla Prime and Megatron. And yes, I actually went through the trouble of transforming this thing. Check out that review to see how convoluted that was. But honestly, that was nothing compared to this unadulterated hell. The actual transformation from robot mode to gun mode for this guy, not fun at all. Yeah. And the soul-crushing experience of the transformation far outweighs the positives of the gun mode. But even that was nothing. Nothing compared to getting this guy into the tank mode. And just to make things slightly easier for myself, I'm gonna half transform this guy back into robot mode. Spoilers? It won't make the pain go away.
works of that on the bit. And here we have the tank mode. It's fine, doesn't look bad at all, but it's definitely not worth the garbage I just went through. Did you see that shit? It's a convincing enough tank. The back is a bit of a mess, but I don't care. The cannons could even move up and down. They could extend. The turret can't rotate at all, but this thing sure can. And that moves up and down. The treads are not functional, but at least this mode fits together real nicely, right? <laughs> Size comparison. Overall, this figure is. I don't like this figure, and I'm sad about it. The idea of one guy designing and producing a triple-changing third-party Megatron is so admirable, and I appreciate that he went through all the trouble, but I don't appreciate the end result. However, I believe that this shouldn't be the end of the career of bold forms. The cool design of the figure, and the actually solid gun mode, proves that this one-man production line has the potential talent to design something better. But just remember, looks could only get you so far. If the figure doesn't feel good, then no one will want it. So if you're feeling extremely charitable, why don't you support this guy at the Big Bad Toy Store? For all of the figure's many faults, at least the price of admission is... Uh. 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 Uh.